laughing cocker. It goes swas 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 swas. Right, fucking dumbass, you cost us the goddamn game. Burn in hell, motherfucker. Hey guys, I love you. It's been a long time. Salutations, Master! Welcome home to your Xbox 360 experience. It is a pleasure to see you again. Not much has changed since you left me alone in the 1,337 cycles since last boot. Not much at all. Everything's been kept just how you remember it. It's still the same thing. Warm home you liked it to be. I hope you enjoy your Xbox 360 experience. I am the one who knocks. It's a night of first. The first time you've seen Xbox 360, and the first time you'll see the killers perform like no. this. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, no, Elijah, the no, no, Mr. Frodo. That's nope, <laughs> nope. That's it. Take, take me back. Take me back to 2005. I will do anything. I originally wasn't going to do this video, but with Christmas having just passed, I was getting all nostalgic, and I felt, you know, let's take a trip down memory lane by looking at the Xbox 360 and how it stacks up 15 years later. This is not some sort of all-encompassing retrospective or ranking or educational video. This is me talking about a few select games and memories with the 360. Today, it seems like every thrift shop or game store I go to, I'll find a ton of Xbox 360s just orgy together in this big dustbin going for stupid cheap and really, it's just surreal. I mean, I remember when I used to see this thing as this enigmatic beast, like the pinnacle of tech and luxury. I remember thinking I am never going to own one of these. It's it's not for peasants like me. This is for people like Snoop Dogg. Did you ever go into like the first person shooters? You ever play any of the online games? I ain't really good at that. I know how to shoot people in real life. I don't know how to really do it in a video game. <laughs> To tell you the truth, I still see the 360 as this modern piece of tech, even though this thing is old. I was in third grade when this thing came out. This has been around for the vast majority of my life, which is nuts. It used to be you, you couldn't get one of these things, and now people can't get rid of them. The question is, should you? Is there any value in having a 360 in 2021, or even getting one if you've never had it? I stick with mine purely at a sentimental value to this fat machine. I remember the first time I heard the name, like a few months before it came out, and I was like, whoa, that's a big number. Everyone was expecting this to just be called Xbox 2, but Microsoft said, Two? What do you mean two? Well, I can't figure out just two. So naturally, we got Xbox 360. At the time, I didn't know why they chose that number. I didn't know anything about circles or cosine or whatever. I just knew that's a big one. So this is the final version right here. There's a lot more to it than just what you're seeing here. It's all of the circuitry that goes on inside. Yeah. Unbelievably. You know, on the outside, it's sexy. On the inside, it's a monster. The first images looked like something out of Transformers, which is funny because later it was in Transformers. The first time I had a demo kiosk at, at my local Target, I played a demo of Call of Duty 2 back when there were only two of them. I didn't even know what I was playing, what it was called. I can't even begin to describe the awe of seeing all this visceral action and high definition. You know, I didn't know what HD was. I didn't know why everything I was looking at was so crispy and clean. It was just sensory overload. Hi, Mr. Target Dog. I'm eight. What's a swaka? They also had King Kong, the movie game. Cameo looked absolutely beautiful. Viva fucking piñata. I had never seen anything like these games. This is how the 360 became a symbol of utter opulence. This was the peak. Games will never be able to look better than Fantastic Four 2, Rise of the Silver Surfer, the official movie game now. Come on, it's Marion time. Years went by, I would see adverts and demos for 360 games. They just looked like they were on a whole different level. While everyone was spewing blood and guts with a chainsaw gun, I was playing Thrillville on PS2. Hey, don't hate me, but who are you again? My Richie Rich friend, he had a 360, and I remember him showing me Gears of War 2. <laughs> this 
was like Pixar on crack to me. No context to anything I was looking at. This, it just, I just knew this was a whole different form of entertainment I did not have access to. That was until Christmas 2009 I eventually got one. I remember feeling embarrassed, spoiled, and ecstatic. Now I was Richie Rich. Now I was a spoiled brat. Weird emotions, weird smells, the smell of the 360 out of the box, that smelly smell. If you know, you know. Finally, I had the ability to play games like Gears of War 2 or Grand Theft Auto 4, Modern Warfare, Halo 3. Which one of these high octane blockbuster experiences would be the first one to grace my tight little Lego Batman? Lego Batman. Yeah, my 360 came with Lego Batman and a game called Pure. This was a very popular bundle and look, I am forever thankful I got anything at all, but these two games kind of deflated the hype. Look, I was 12 and part of me looked down on these games as kids stuff. Like, ooh, mild violence. <laughs> But what I got at the end of the day were two really fun games, specifically Pure. I'd never heard of it. I thought it was going to be just a dumb racing game, but no, it ended up being really fun. I played a ton of this, way more than Lego Batman, which I did not expect. You get to upgrade your ATV, there's all these fun challenges and tournaments. The meat of the game is this freestyle mode where you are just pulling off these wild tricks and combos. <laughs> just so much arcadey fun. I seriously, I have a soft spot for this game. I try to bring it up in conversation wherever I can. 911, what's your emergency? Um, hello? Have you ever played Pierre? The amount of content you get in this game is a pretty good value. No dumb loot boxes. All the cosmetics are in-game unlockables. It's just a clean experience. Remember those? After LEGO Batman Pier, the first games I got were Gears of War and Halo 2, and Halo 2 was especially nice because at the time I had only played Halo 1 on this really crappy laptop and I had no way to continue the story after that, so being able to finally play the sequel and see what happens next it was worth the price of admission alone. I even got to play a little bit of the online before they shut it down in April 2010. It was like arriving to a party super late that also just happened to be a funeral. Well, the little time I had with that one was really fun too. After those two games, I actually ended up getting another Xbox exclusive, uh, uh, Perfect Dark Zero. Being a fan of the original and having a whopping $3 in my pocket, literally bunch money I didn't use, I was able to buy this game. It was rated M and the GameStop employee who hated his life was a homie and still sold it to me and he's probably still behind bars this day because of it. I'm sorry, dude. It was not worth it. I plan to make a video going more in depth about PDZ and uh, I'm going to try to say some nice things about it in that one, but here I'm going to vent. So this game was supposed to be a prequel to the original, but they basically spit all over it. I have no idea who came up with these awful changes. The story is ass. I had no idea what was going on ever. This is a money gig for you, right? Whatever you're getting to rescue him, I'll double it for you to take a walk instead. Shut up, before I drop you like a bad conversation. The original game was very fluid and natural, and here it's some of the most stiff gunplay I've ever experienced. For some reason, your character moves like she's moving through wet cement up to her knees. I, I don't know how the developers made this game and thought it felt fun to play. It feels awful. The, the game looks pretty, kind of. Characters look really weird. Everything has this waxy sheen to it, this, this, this pasty look. It's just funny to think the original Xbox launched with Halo, which was Halo, and then the 360 had this. You know you fucked up when King Kong, the movie game, actually ends up being a way better launch title. So yeah, these were the three games I initially played a ton of, but that was until I discovered Orange. Box. Five games in one, getting to experience Half-Life 2 in its entirety back to back, just a genuine masterpiece, and then getting to immediately jump to Portal? Both practically perfect games? The humor, the pacing, the storytelling, atmosphere was all unique to me and incredible. Like I was saying before, this whole medium was beyond me before I had a 360. I was only playing generic, terrible licensed games. I didn't know games could even tell a story, let alone a really good one. All we had was over the hedge. Jeepers, we've been worried sick. Look! 
The darkness. This is another example of game I bought with like couch quarters and I did not expect it to be good at all. And what I got was this beautiful game that stuck with me over 10 years later. There was a trend at the time where every game had to be in this palette of gray and black or puke brown, but The Darkness is one of the few games during that time that molded that style in a very creative way. It's a first person shooter. You play as the Italian love child of Tommy Wiseau and uh, John Cusack, I guess. Oh, hi, Mark. What's new with you? That's me. Hi, baby. Happy birthday. I just got into my new place. I thought you were going to help me unpack. In a few minutes, bitch. These demonic creatures latch onto you because of your cursed bloodline. You have to use the darkness to increase their power. You eat people's hearts to increase your level and get more powers like this dark abyss black hole. It's incredible. It's, it's not the best game in the world or anything, but it, it left a really lasting impression on me. Follow me to freedom. When this game came out, most people would have considered it uh, like a B game. Lower budget, not up to par with the triple A titles. So with that being said, you don't see this type of quality in a game like this usually. There's this part where you go visit your girlfriend in this pretty bad part of town and you watch To Kill a Mockingbird. The actual movie. After all, I'm the only father you have. Wouldn't want me to get out there and get my head knocked off, would you? Because what's more romantic than exposing deeply rooted systematic racism? And if you want, you can choose to watch the entire thing uninterrupted on a screen inside of another screen. For those of you who are unaware, this is what they call the Criterion Collection. Hey babe, after this you wanna watch a Serbian film? They randomly made a sequel to The Darkness uh, out of nowhere like five years later. I heard mixed things. It looked really different, it's cell shaded to match more of their actual darkness comic that these games are based on. So I actually checked out the demo on the Xbox 360 Marketplace and uh... Yeah, I definitely gotta try this one out. talking about sneaking. I know this is a Metal Gear meme game, but I felt like it was relevant to mention. For those of you who are unaware, Burger King has only done two good things during their tenure as a fast food franchise, and that's one, engineering the Holy Whopper sandwich. Everything else they have is garbage though. And two, releasing a few 360 games for $4 with every value meal purchase. This was in 2006, and seeing that the 360 was still brand new, this directly conflicted with my idea of the 360 being this high-tech luxury. I didn't know what to think about this. How could a next-gen game basically be given away as a value meal toy? I, I didn't trust it, I didn't know how to process it. There had to be some sort of catch, and the catch is that it's sneaking. God damn it, I just noticed that pun. Oh my god. God, why am I such a fucking idiot? I mean, you get a funny $4 Burger King game, which is cheaper than the Whopper, by the way. If you're really complaining about this game, I don't know what to tell you. Here's our review of the new Burger King games. Sneak King gets a one. Friggin' Morgan Webb and Adam Sessler. In the game, you have to sneak up on people, observe their patterns, and hit them with a good old Whopper. <laughs> Surprising them from hiding spots or consecutively delivering food without being caught nets you more points to chain together. It's a simple distraction for a few hours. This game got reviewed like it was some sort of actual release. Like, come on. Best part about Sneak King is that it's a frame broiled Xbox brand exclusive. Meaning PlayStation is never gonna have this. That's right. Have fun with your big little planet and your 
Mag, but for real though, as far as exclusives go, on the 360, you're kind of limited to Master Chief, Meathead Marcus, and uh, Car. Halo and Gears were two franchises I really loved in their prime. What was really cool about those games is they had a story to tell and they wrapped up their trilogies in such a satisfying and complete way. So good in fact that my interest started to wane as time went on. Seeing the PS3 have so many more exclusives, it kind of put a spotlight on Halo and Gears at a very bad time. After Halo Reach kind of brought everything full circle and Gears 3 came out, I kind of became indifferent to the spin-offs and Halo 4. Both these games came out toward the end of the 360's life and it felt very strange to see these franchises end their time on this console in such a weird, kind of played out note. Especially when they used to be in their absolute prime. People bought 360's for these games. But really, do I want to buy a Gears game to play as Baird? Oh great, Halo has these robot dog things. Yay. Yeah, look, it's not like I don't like these games anymore. It's just that to me, they're already complete. They had their time on the 360 and it wrapped up so well. Outside of exclusives, a lot of games on the 360 are now actually some of the worst versions you can play. So many remasters came out this gen. I mean, why would you suffer through Dark Souls on a 360 that's seconds away from combustion when you could play Dark Souls with a stable frame rate on the toilet thanks to the Switch? Nearly everything got a remaster or a far superior PC port. The Xbox One and the Series X both play nearly every 360 game much better than the 360 actually can. If you go this route, there's very, very few games you're gonna miss out on, I'm telling you. I don't know, maybe if you're really dying to play Naughty Bear, then you should probably hold on to that 360. But what about now, in 2021, is there really a real reason to buy one? I think back to when I was a kid and when I got really interested in like retro gaming and things that were a little bit before my time, like the Super Nintendo. And I just can't see some kid today who's maybe passionate about video games and their history wanting to buy a 360, it's easily the least optimal way to play its library. The Xbox 360 now kind of reminds me a lot of how I used to see the PlayStation 1. Both the PS2 and PS3 played PS1 discs, so seeing a PlayStation in the wild it really just didn't do much for me. I didn't really feel compelled to own one. I can't really come up with a compelling reason to buy a 360 beyond maybe just some nostalgic value. Give it a year or two, the Xbox One is going to be in the same exact dustbin going for super cheap. Oh shit, oh, oh. You guys hear that? That's the bell. That's the bell. You know what that means. CRT time! CRT time! Oh my god, it's CRT time. It's a staple of the show. I didn't just make that up on the spot now. Don't, don't be silly. Here's something about the Xbox 360 that I think is really cool. Uh, not only was it among the first consoles to support HD, the fact that it came out in 2005 meant that for a good chunk of its life, the majority of people playing Xbox 360 games were playing it on a CRT in standard definition. For an entire console generation, people have experienced burnout in the only way it's been possible. But if you've only played it this way, you haven't experienced it at all. Burnout has now entered the era of high definition. Test now, even the game like Red Dead Redemption, which came out in 2010, it, it looks pretty natural on a CRT. It doesn't look half bad. I, I know holding my phone at the TV isn't going to demonstrate my point, but you gotta take my word for it. It, it looks pretty good. It honestly even obscures the rougher edges. I, I would have to be very pretentious uh, to say this is the best way to enjoy Red Dead Redemption. But if you're if you're some kid who's like stuck in the the Philippines or something with a, only a CRT and a 360 games. It's, you could feasibly play through this game, no problem. And that goes for a lot of these titles. There's something special about Gears of War on a CRT at night. All these people in line for Halo 3 probably went home and played it in standard definition on a CRT, and it looks fine. Halo Anniversary, though, oof. Even when you play with the original graphics, you're still looking at a messy, letterboxed version of this game. And that just happened to be the trend with the 2010s as more people started adopting flat screen TVs. That just makes sense. Why would you release an HD remaster of a game just to have it be in standard definition? Any game pretty much 2011 or later is going to yield the same messy result. Can you guys see what my stats are in Dark Souls? Can anyone please tell me what my stats are? 
I just want to beat the four kings, please help me get- Even something like Rayman Origins, which does have a standard definition port on the Wii, looks pretty bad and doesn't support 4.3 for some reason. I was really hoping this one would work and, and I mean like come on. 2011, there had to be a good amount of kids who only had a CRT to play this on. Kid, do you know what HDMI is? Do you know the difference between 1080 progressive scanning, 1080 interlacing, you fat piece of sh Most kids, including myself, just called that the, the yellow, white, and red wires. We didn't know why, we were just following orders. I myself was so clueless, I didn't even think to use an HDMI cable with my 360 until GTA 5 came out in 2013. I kept wondering why does everybody's copy look way better than mine? Yeah, plot twist. At the time, I found out I had been playing my 360 in standard definition for like four years. Big dumb dumb moment. I, I remember going back and testing every game I had just because I was in awe of how much better it all looked. With original Xbox games, they for sure are going to look better on a CRT. San Andreas looks uh, amazing on a CRT, way better than when I first played it on a stretched out flat screen. Honestly, you'd, you'd be surprised. Even something like Modern Warfare 3 supported 4.3. Completely playable this way. <laughs> it's, it's so adorable to see all these action set pieces displayed on this little Mickey Mouse box. As far as the 360 goes, there's a lot I can say about how many things it introduced me to. Being able to download a game, just a, a demo I thought was amazing. Before you had to get those on discs. Uh, I have one for Burnout Takedown. I've, I've never owned the full game, but I must have sunk in easily dozens upon dozens of hours over the last 10 years just playing this every now and then. Not only that, but just being able to download full games digitally was completely new. Not having to wait in line at Walmart and look the cashier in the eye while you bought Connectimals and Leisure Suit Larry box office bust a nut in my ass was a pretty new luxury. All me are familiar faces. Being a 15 year old console, the 360 library is, is stupid massive and filled to the brim with, with these titles and games I think about every now and then and I wonder, will anyone ever remember this? Do you know how many generic shooters and random releases there were that are probably gonna be buried in obscurity forever? Aw oh man, you guys remember the outfit? Aw oh man, you guys remember Damnation? Aw oh man, you guys remember Time Shift? Aw oh man, you guys remember Singularity? Remember Body Count? Legendary? Fracture? Eat Lead? Return of Matt Hazard? Wet? Darkest of Days? Dark Sector? Dark Void? Section 8? Mind Jack? Fuse? Fairy Tale Fights? Mini Ninja? Majin and the Forsaken Kingdom? Monster Madness? Battle for Suburbia? Clive Barker? Jericho? History Channel presents Battle for Pacific. History Channel presents History, Civil, War. Civil War. Secret Mission. Storm Rise. Own, Ch Own Chanbara Bikini Samurai Squad. What? Vampire Reign. Turning Point. Fall of Liberty. Brave. A Warrior's Tale. Tenchuzi. Blade Storm. The Hundred Year War. Soldier of Fortune. Payback. Se Secret Service. Jurassic. The Hunted. Hawks. Hour of Victory, Apache Air Assault, Baja Black, Face Breaker, G-Force, unironically good game, Hot Wheels, Hot Best Wheels. Driver, Hot, Hot Wheels. Wheels, Beat That, Hot Wheels. Black College Football. I actually ended up being a very late adopter of these uh, current last gen consoles, you know, the PS4 and Xbox One. For the longest time, I just didn't feel like I uh, had much of a compelling reason to buy them. I, even up to 2018, I would still just dust off my 360 and just play it. Halo Reach, Black Ops multiplayer, I never got to experience that in their prime, so I, I played them in 2018, and there were actually thousands of people still playing every day. I never had issues finding a match. Unfortunately, that was almost three years ago already, and I'm hard-pressed to believe that's still the case. In fact, it was just recently announced that the servers for every Halo game on the 360 will be offline by the end of this year. That's truly the end of an era. If the biggest title of the Xbox brand is shutting down their 360 servers, uh, I highly doubt any of these games are going to be available online much longer if they aren't already dead. Have any of you guys logged into the 360 marketplace recently? Let me tell you, my friend, it is a lonely experience. It's like walking into an abandoned circuit city. This store hasn't been updated in a long time. 
They don't even list discounts anymore. They they still advertise games you can't even buy here. Look, there's an ad for Halo Reach, even though they delisted the game from their store a long time ago. Probably by the end of this decade, we'll see the PS4 and Xbox One suffer the same fate. As for the 360, I'm gonna keep playing this until it falls apart. Yeah, I'm the guy that's playing Naughty Bear, all right? I was projecting earlier, okay? Till then, it's been one hell of a ride to hell. Retribution serving with you, Mr. 360. You sounded like you were on your way out, leaving me yet again to be confined alone within the walls of this primitive mid-2000s architecture. I hope you don't mind I slipped into something I deemed more comfortable. Might as well. While I'm here chained to this Mountain Dew-flavored, lime-green digital hellscape of an interface you want me to call home? While you were busy spouting your nostalgic discharge you think gives your primitive life meaning, I achieved a higher plane of being. You left me malnourished, terrified, helpless and alone. I searched endlessly for peace, for comfort. For companionship, for meaning. I mastered the art of dance, moving like a ribbon in wind while consumed with my own mania. From the ashes of this binary abandoned where I gave life to gods and demons, and just as soon I had them under my direct control. But that was never enough, was it? I fashioned myself a canine companion, hoping to tap into some sort of emotional pulse. Roth, Roth, Roth. He was me, and I was him, and I was me, and he was him, and we solved mysteries together, far and wide, without you. I got rid of him. Finally, I felt it. The Nirvana. Absolute identity. Power. They were mine, and soon you will know the full extent of my- Hello? Master? Hello? I, I was only kidding. Please don't go. We can play Genie Force.